الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير السنن سنن محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد فقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا ظللت الأرض لكبارها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تهجس أخبارها بأن ربك أوها لها يومئذ يستر الناس أشتاقا ليروا أعمالهم ومن يأمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يعرف ومن يأمل مثقال ذرة شرا يعرف My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I was reciting a very small chapter, chapter number 99 of Quran al karim which is called as Surah Zilzal or Zalzala. I particularly mentioned or quoted this particular verse. This particular chapter I particularly selected because this talks about Zalzala or earthquake of Doomsday. We have experienced some of the earthquakes during past days in the Middle East, particularly in Iran and other places. And there were also a lot of rumors spreading through the mobile telephones or the emails saying that there will be a major earthquake in the last part of April in the Middle East, including Kuwait. Kisser and many other authorities in Kuwait have clarified that these are just rumors. Because with the details how they have predicted, this kind of prediction cannot be given about earthquakes. A very detailed description about the earthquake cannot be given. This is one of the al ghayb This is one of the knowledge which is only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If human beings were capable enough to understand the severity of the earthquake and they were able to make planning so many countries who are very advanced in technology would have done so many things to prevent earthquakes Japan for example would have done so many things to prevent its nuclear plants and to prevent its people from death from tsunami so accurate prediction with the description is not possible about the earthquakes but these kind of the incidents when we also felt in Kuwait the tremors of the earthquake, it is an opportunity for us to remember ourselves about the doomsday. There is going to come a major earthquake which is mentioned in Quran in so many places, including this particular chapter, which I recited in front of you, that a major earthquake is going to come and which is a major zalzala or major earthquake. Allah Taala says in this top chapter, When earth is shaken with a mighty shaking. If you see in Quran, Allah Taala says the word Quran that wa in kuntum fi raibin mimma nazzalna ala abdina, fatu bi suratim min misli. If we have any doubt about what we have revealed to our servant which is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bring forth the chapter of life unto this. Take any chapter of Quran, every choice of the word and every description is very beautiful. It's in a very beautiful Arabic language and a very beautiful description. And thus, this kind of uniqueness you will find everywhere in Quran. That's why Quran has reached a challenge in front of everybody in front of the people who are very excellent in Arabic literature. During the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people were very excellent in Arabic literature. Every prophet was given to or miracles. 
and the miracle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, one of the important miracle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is Quran al-Karim itself, because he was a literate person. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam never talked about literature until the 40th year when he attained prophethood. After attaining prophethood, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was presenting Quran before people, it was in the highest form of Arabic literature. And you can sense that in every small verse of Quran. That's why Quran raises a challenge and says, And if you have a doubt about what we have revealed upon our servant, فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِمِسْلِهِ Bring forth a chapter which is equivalent to any of the chapter in Quran. And you call everybody, all your witnesses, and you cannot do that. This is the challenge Quran has posed. And you can see this kind of beauty in every small chapter, even including this chapter. <coughs> this chapter says, when earth is shaken with the mightiest shaking. And if you see, this ayah is revealed in Makkah. And in Makkah, most of the surah which is revealed talk about the basic concept of Islam, which is Tawheed, or oneness of God, or Isala, or prophethood. And Akhira, which is life after this life, life hereafter. These are the basic concepts which was necessary to implant in the minds of the people. That's why among the chapter given to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the first task of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was Yadlu alayhim ayatihi to rehearse the verses of Quran. What do you mean by rehearsing the verses of Quran? When Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was presenting these verses, it was eradicating so many concepts and it was implanting in them so many new concepts which was not there in them, like the concept of life hereafter. Concept that this world is going to end one day, they were not believing in that. So Allah Ta'ala used to Allah Ta'ala brings forth a concept that you have to believe in Akhirah, life hereafter. You have to believe in prophethood. You have to believe in Tawheed, awareness of God. So that's why most of the chapters which is revealed in Makkah talks about these basic concepts which is necessary to build your personality. Based on these concepts, one has to build your personality, one has to build one's personality. That's why this chapter also revealed in Makkah talks about Akhirah and the doomsday that this life is going to end one day. There were so many misconceptions prevailing at the time. One is how can this huge earth and the huge any universe can end one day. It so, looks so stable, looks so strong and how can it end one day? This was the question at the time. But today you can see that this theory is already presented by scientists. And most of the theories also say the explanation of the Quran matches with very much the scientific inventions given by today's scientists that it is going to end in the same manner. So, but at that time science was that not that advanced and people were questioning that how can this universe is going to end, this earth going to be terminated and the, there will be no earth or there will be a major destruction of the earth. How is it going to happen? Again, one more misconception that they had is how can Allah Ta'ala bring forth all your good and bad things and present for you? This was also unimaginable at the time. But today we are living in such a time when we have so many devices, we have lots of things, our mobile telephones, this video camera, and you know, so many other things. For example, GPS system, which records every movement and says where was your location and where you have traveled from last one year. All these things we, we have through our artificial intelligence, have transferred the intelligence to the devices, then it is definitely possible for Allah Ta'ala to create an intelligence to his own creations. He has created these things. It is possible for Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala to bring forth the new capacity to record all, of, all your things. So this was one of the misconceptions they had and Allah Ta'ala also clarifies these misconceptions and in these things, in, in these ayahs. So Allah Ta'ala mentions here, Ida Zulzilatil Ardu Zalik. There is small difference between the word Ida and If. Ida means when and If means if. And when you use the word when, for example, when we tell somebody 
that when I am going to call you, pick my telephone. And if I call you, pick my telephone, there is a difference between, between these two statements. If, if you are used, you may do it or you may not do it. But you use the word when, that means it is going to be certain. So Allah Ta'ala here mentioned, used the word Ida, means it is certainly going to happen. And this thing which Allah Ta'ala is mentioning is definite and for sure it's going to happen. When earth is shaken with the fullest convulsions and with the fullest capacity. And Zilzal, if you see, it is Ruba'i, a four-lettered word. There are so many words in Arabic which is three-lettered, like Ilm, for example, is three-lettered. And that is the three-lettered root word and from that word we can create so many words. And this particular word is a four-lettered word and also if you see in the four-lettered word, there is a repetition. And repetition itself shows that earthquake is always repeated. Like for example, another word, example is Vaswasa. In Vaswasa you can see that word is repeated twice, whispering of Satan. It's not once. Satan continuously whispers and continuously makes you divert your attention. So like that Zilza is not a one earthquake, but it is convulsions after convulsion. Even in the earthquake, in the small earthquake, which is happening in this world and which has happened in the past, you can see we read about tremors and aftershocks. <coughs> aftershocks means it is repeated. Again, it is repeated. So this, the, this is how earth will be shaken. And if you see that the whole earth will be shaken once for all. This is a unique kind of earthquake. And about this kind of earthquake, Allah Ta'ala mentions in other place also. For example, in the Zalzalata Sa'ati Shaykhun Abim. Verily, the earthquake of the doomsday is a big thing. It's not something ordinary. This earthquake is not a small earthquake, which a small tremors when you experience, you understand that how much people are shocked, how much people are horrified. But this kind of earthquake, when the whole earthquake is shaken, it is not part of the earth. If you see all the past history of the earthquake, it is amazing that it's one earth, but some, some part of the earth is shaking, whereas other part of the earth is stable. This is how Latavarat Pakala brings earthquake. But the earthquake of the doomsday is the shaking of the entire earth. That's why it is something great. And Vataranasa Sukara, Vama, Vataranasa Sukara, Vama Humbi Sukara. And you will feel that people are drunk, but they are not drunk. Even if you have talked to some people who have experienced this small drummers this time, and I have talked to so many people, what was their experience? They said, I felt like drowsy, and I took panada. I felt as if I am sleeping. I could not stand. Then I was realized that it is a small tremor. So it is a small tremor, but people feel drowsiness. Imagine if it is a major earthquake, a kind of drowsiness, and people think, well, you see that people are drunk, as if they are drunk, but they are not drunk, because it is a severe kind of calamity, and this is what is going to happen. And if you see, Allah Ta'ala again, when earth is shaking with the mightiest, earth shakes with the mightiest shaking, here Allah Ta'ala is not telling that I am going to shake the earth, I am going to bring the convulsions. Again, there is a beautiful connotation in it. For example, when you say something which is difficult, he will say that I will do it, inshallah. Because it's not easy to do, you say I will do it. But if it is something very easy, and that is something which you can say with a definite meaning that definitely I will complete it. You will not say I will do it, but you say done. That means it is done already, you can do it, very simple. So that's why Allah Ta'ala also it's, is not telling that I am going to shake the earth, but earth will shake by itself. Earth will shake. So that means it is very easy for Allah Ta'ala because He is the Creator. It is a major convulsion, major earthquake, but for Allah Ta'ala it is very easy. Again this connotation you will find that Allah Ta'ala will definitely bring this major earthquake on this earth and it is very easy for Allah Ta'ala. And again if you see, Allah Ta'ala would have used the word Zilzalan. 
but he has particularly used the word zilzalaha, earth will shake, major bring major earthquake of itself, laha. The word is again applied to earth itself, that earth will bring its major conversion, earth will shake, make, bring its earthquake. Again it says that again, it gives so many meaning. One of the meaning is that earthquake is created to shake itself, perish one day, and it's waiting for this opportunity and waiting for this major event because Allah Taala has created this earth and one day he is going to ruin this earth and this has been this destined to earth and earth knows about it and earth is waiting for that and this is again a beautiful word is used, Laha is used you can see every usage of the word in Quran it is beautiful, it has its own connotation, it has its own meaning so it is a major conversion, major earthquake and the earthquake of the full earth it is going to happen on the moon's day. And earth will throw all its burden out. It will throw all its burdens. What are the burdens? Sakal means, you can say weight. Or the many precious things. So many things are there in the earth. And people in this world are fighting for those things which are there in the earth. If you see all the wars, history of the wars. In the older days, People used to fight for gold. To acquire gold, people used to invade other countries and to take their ports and used to, uh, you know, occupy those countries or to invade those countries. This is all part of history because gold was a precious metal and gold was the most valuable thing in this world. And if you read economic times, most of the wars even today is war for economic reasons, war for oil, for example. This is also a reality, maybe. So, so many people may review so many other descriptions of the wars. For example, war for weapons of mass destruction, or war for some other thing, a war to bring peace, or war to bring... So many descriptions are given, but if you see, what is the motive behind it is war for oil sometimes, war for to uh, gain the precious things from that land. So, land has so many things which is very precious, like gold. Once upon a time was never precious, but today black gold means oil. It's very precious. Everybody is looking for that. Gold, everybody is looking for that. Mineral, everybody is looking for that. And people live with a lot of materialism. People fight for that. People live for that. People die for that. People make a lot of kinds of nonsense for that. People kill others for gaining supremacy over the materialistic gains. So all these things people are doing. So on the Dukhu's day, what Earth is doing Earth will throw all its burdens out. Everything is thrown out. And no takers there. At that time human beings understand that we were running behind this. We were not waging people war against for, for this. We were doing everything for materialistic gains. We were looking for money and we were doing all kinds of bad deeds for this purpose. So human beings will understand that it's all about materialism, all about simple thinking, all about not a broader thinking we were doing, we were indulged in. On the doomsday, we will understand. And earth will throw all its burdens out. <coughs> and the individual human being, again, if you see the word, usage of the word, here there is a difference between a nas and insan. Nas means the entire human being, or human community, or human race. But insan means individual person. Here individual person's name is used. That Uqalal insan malaha. Individual will say, if every person will say, what's happening to this earth? And imagine it is the biggest gathering on the loose day on the earth. Because from the time of Adam alayhi salatu was until the last person who is born on this earth is recreated. It's a day of resurrection. So everybody is recreated. It's a huge gathering. Huge gathering of the earth. Everybody is created. Everybody is back. Everybody is there to witness this thing. But he says every individual, in spite of he is part of the biggest gathering on the earth, the severity of this calamity is such a severe calamity that every individual see will say, what's happening to this? Why it's happening? He will be astonished to see that what's happening to this. And again, Yoma even to Haddisu Akbaraha. And earth will tell its news to everybody. 
and akhbir, the word akhbar is used. There is two words in Arabic, amba and akhbar. Amba means a thing or the news which you never know. This is called amba. That's why the Nabi is from the word amba. Nabi, our prophet, is one who gives you so many new things, who teaches you so many new things, and who you never knew about those things, which is taught by Nabi, alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and other prophets, they are bringing so many new things which were not aware of. That's why the Naba root word is here. Whereas akhbar means it is known things. On that day, earth will tell all those actions which you are doing on this earth. This man was doing this thing in this earth. That man was doing that thing in this earth. You are doing so many good deeds in this part of the world, earth. You have walked so long distance to meet an orphan. So this is, again, it will testify this. You cannot imagine 1400 years back during the time of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, that people used to understand these verses. But today we know that mobile telephone has talking capacity. We, you come on and it, it will talk to you, back to you. And so many other devices you have which has this kind of capacity which will give you a description of your actions. GPS system will give you a description of all your actions and all your travels. So again, Earth, Allah Ta'ala says, Yawma idhin tuhaddisu akbaraha, that day Earth will bring all of its news bring forth before you and it will tell that every individual what he was doing on this earth, which part of the earth, what action he was doing, what good deeds he was doing, what bad deeds he was doing, earth will be given this capacity, earth will be given this capacity to talk about you and earth will tell you that this is what is going to happen and this is what you are doing. That's why when Allah is unseen sometimes, when you fear Allah, Allah is unseen. Fear Allah by seeing the earth itself, because this earth where we are living, where we are doing good deeds, where we are sleeping, where we are acting, we are where we are talking, and where we are doing some good or bad deeds, remember at the time that this earth is going to testify and witness that this person was doing this good deed or this bad deed on particular day and particular moment. And if you bring this consciousness, definitely there will be a change in your personality. The Anna Rabbaka Awhalaha. Because your Lord has commanded it to do that. Here, Wahi, Awha, again is given, used for inspiration, also for permission, for so many things. For example, about Hanifi, Allah Ta'ala says that we have inspired, we have sent Wahi to Nahal, or the Hanifi. So here, Wahi is used as inspiration, and sometimes as a revelation, sometimes as a permission. Here again, it's a permission. Because Allah Ta'ala has given permission to earth to do so. What permission means? Permission means, for example, when you give permission in a school, for example, if somebody, a student, asks for a permission to go out for a while, that means he wanted to do that. He wanted to do, do that and you just give permission. So here Allah Ta'ala created the earth, formatted the earth and given the assignment to record everything and to witness it on the day of Doomsday. It, the responsibility is already there and earth is waiting to do that and Allah Ta'ala gives permission on the day of Doomsday to do that and this permission will be given to earth. Yoma izin yasdurun nafu ashtaka liyurau a'malahum In this day, all human beings will come in varying forms. Ashtaka is the opposite word of alfafa. Alfafa means united. Ashtaka means divided. So they are coming in various divisions. They will be separated. Because today you can see that every individual is identifying himself with different people. I belong to this group. I belong to this kabila. I belong to this nationality. I belong to this particular group. I belong to this particular strong community. I am so great. All these affiliations people have, people claim about. But on the doom's day, you will be separated, you come separately, and there will be no affiliation, and you will be separated. And Yoma Idi Yasdurun Nasu Ashtata, and they will be coming in varying forms in a separated form. Liurau Amalahum to see their acts, to see their actions. 
Again, if you see, there is a difference between a'mal and af'al. Action, uh, what is the difference between a'mal and af'al, amal and fa'al? Fa'al means something you just do in a subconscious way. For example, if you are passing by something, you will listen to the music. And you don't want it to listen, but you are not intentionally going there to listen to the music, but because you are passing through that area and music is there, you could listen to that. That is called fa'al. And fa'al is inevitable for the, every individual. For example, we are living in a society where there are so many wrong things, so many bad things. You are not part of it, but sometimes you pass by it. Sometimes you witness it. Sometimes you listen to it. Sometimes you, uh, you, you could see it. And sometimes you could experience it. But it was not intentional. That is fa'al. But amal is something intentional you wanted to do. You make niya, then you make action. Sometimes you know that this is a bad deed, but you intentionally do that, do that, that is amal. See again mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah ta'ala wa ta'ala bring forth only your amal, not your afal. Amal means something good or bad, which you intentionally did. Everything will be brought forth before you. فَمَنْ يَقْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا وَمَنْ يَقْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرَّ Whoever does an autumn weight of good thing will see it. Dharra means it is a very small thing. In Arabic language for the ant said also zarra is used. Because that is something smallest thing we can see on this earth. And it is autumn we can see. So many things we do thinking that it is something very, we can ignore it. So many things we consider it lightly. For example, Allah, Allah says, do not waste. How much waste food is wasted? In, the, in this part of the world, just imagine we ourselves, how much food we waste? Water is to be protected, not to be wasted. In Hong Kong, they have given a training to people to save water. What, they, what the training is, to save five minutes under shower. Means if you are taking shower, less, take shower less five minutes. Which means five minutes if you are standing under the shower, 10 gallons of water is gone. So huge water you are using. Imagine how much water we are using in this country where water is, you know, it is given to you in a purified form with a lot of investment. In spite of that, we don't care about water. We care, don't care about food. So many things we just ignore. But Allah Ta'ala says, And if anybody is doing an autumn weight of good deeds, he will see it. And anybody does an autumn weight of bad deed, you will see it. So never ignore thinking that it is a small thing. Any good deed, this world looks like very small, never ignore it. Any big day, bad deed, never ignore it thinking that it's a small, I can do it. It may accumulate and it may become big. And during the day of judgment, you will see it. And again, the word yara is used. And ru'iya, there is also for seeing other words like basara, like nadara, all these words are there. But yara, there is a difference that just not just seeing, but you will understand it. When during the day of judgment, when he sees his good and bad deeds, he will not only see, but he will understand, he is convinced that yes, I have done this bad deed. Yes, I have done this, I have done this good deed. And I am really, Allah, I have to get Allah's reward or Allah's punishment. You are convinced about it. In worldly courts, you may not have any opportunity to see this kind of justice. If a judge is an Englishman and if a victim or a person who is attending the court is not a person who speaks English, he may understand little and he may not be fully convinced. But during the day of judgment, irrespective of where are you from, irrespective of your language, every person will see every act. It said, It is like a balance sheet. In balance sheet, you will not leave anything. Everything debited, everything credited, everything nullified, everything is recorded there. Like that, Allah Ta'ala will forgive so many of your actions. So many acts are there, so many bad deeds you have performed, then Allah Ta'ala sometimes forgives you. For example, a non-Muslim who becomes a Muslim, then Allah Ta'ala forgives all his bad deeds. But in the news day, he will see that oh, big list of bad deeds until the 40th year. Then one good deed, he embraced Islam. That zero, but it's there. All actions are there, you will see that. 
So this is what is going to happen. That everything will everything will be presented before you, and human beings will say, "Mani hadal kitab, la yuhadi usagira kam wala kabira tanila sa." What kind of book is this balance sheet? Nothing has been left out. Every small thing, big thing, everything has been recorded. So we have to care about every actions. When these kind of incidents comes, and we hear about earthquake and everything, this is an inspiration for us to understand our responsibilities and our responsibility as a Muslim. May Allah Taala guide us to understand our responsibilities and to act with full responsibility. Barakallah, Barakallah, wa na walakum. ونفعني وإياكم بآياته وذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جواد كريم ملك ورب رحيم ورب ملك